Hi, my name's Martin Conway. I head up professional services at Contamac Limited here in the UK. And today I'd like to take you through a basic gas permeable contact lens fit. Fitting GP lenses for the novice fitter can be quite a daunting pro uh, prospect. And so I thought today I'd show you some shortcuts and tips and tricks that I've gathered over the past 35 years. Selection of the first lens um, is normally dictated by the manufacturer and they normally refer you to K readings or in this case we have quite a sophisticated piece of software that will actually suggest the first lens that we should try. Um, what I'd like to show you today, this, uh, this particular piece of software is suggesting that we start with an 810 base curve and I'll just show you that we can't rely on software alone. We really have to look through the slit lamp and look at the fluorescent pattern. And that's what I'll take you through today. This is the Medmont image of the suggested first lens. And if you look at the top right hand corner of the screen now, you can see that the flattest K uh, lies along 180 and measures 8.08 .08 millimeter and the steepest K lies along 90 at 7.93. That uh, means that we're dealing with a very small amount of, with the raw astigmatism. Probably the most difficult to fit with a spherical lens. Um, it's suggesting that we should start with a, an 810, and uh, let's see now what happens when we put that lens on the eye and see how it compares with this suggested picture. So here's our 810 lens on the eye, and we can immediately see that this is nothing like the suggested image. The lens is clearly loose. We have excessive clearance top and bottom, and with the blink, the lens wants to rotate around the axis rather than across the center. Clearly, this lens isn't going to be comfortable, and we'll need to tighten it. So here we have a eight base curve lens on the eye and immediately we can see an improvement in the picture. Less uh, clearance top and bottom and the lens is centering better. However, it still prefers to rotate around the apex of the cornea rather than across it as we can see at this section here. So better, but still not as we'd like. So we'll steepen it a fraction. Well, this time we'll be going to a 790. And here is the steepest lens of all that we've used so far, 7.9 base curve. And immediately we can see that movement is better, moving across the apex of the cornea. However, there's a hint of fluorescein underneath the central part of the lens. Also, the edge clearance um, along the horizontal is not ideal. But this lens is slightly on the tight side. So we'll probably this time have to have a lens made somewhere between the 790 and the 8 of the fitting set. So our next lens will be ordered as a 795. So let's look at the 795 on the eye. Immediately the picture looks better. We've got a nice band of clearance around the edge of the lens. The lens is moving across the apex nice and slowly with the blink. And at last, I think we can safely say that this lens is going to be more comfortable than the others. That's going to center better. So this will be our final lens, this 7.95. Well, I hope these few clips have been useful. And they certainly taught us not to rely solely on software. Knowledge of fluorescent patterns, and more importantly, in my case, I think movement of the lens are key components of a successful fit. When it comes to putting lenses in the patient, most of the textbooks will tell us to actually put the, the lens directly onto center. Now, this can be quite intimidating for a patient, especially a new patient. And so what I'd like to share with you now is another technique of actually putting the lenses in from the white of the eye. 
Okay, lens is nicely wetted, so if you'd like to look down for me, Sophie, I'm going to lift the lid up. You keep looking down. I'm going to place the lens deliberately at 12 o'clock. And if you now look at my hand, I'm going to hold the lens in place with the lid. You look up and onto the lens, and then I look down, and I've retained the upper lid, so the patient still cannot feel the lens. I gently let go of the lid, and if you have a slow blink, you'll feel the edge of the lens. If it starts to irritate, look down into your lap until it becomes more comfortable. Much more pleasant experience for the patient, and for the practitioner, you don't have to chase lost lenses around the eye. Let's look at some tips for the patient when the patient comes to put the lenses in. So what I normally like to do, rather than have the patient try to put the lens onto the centre of the cornea and fail and end up chasing the lens around the eye, what I like to do is get the patient to put them on at the six o'clock position and then manoeuvre them into position under control using the lid. Here the lens is put in below the cornea and using the sharp edge of the lid we gently push the lens up into place. The lens is nicely into position and under control at all times. We should never let the patient leave the practice without being shown how to retrieve a lost lens, should the lens become dislodged during wear or upon insertion. So what we'll show now is the lens being deliberately put in off center in the upper fornix and the patient is then instructed in how to retrieve it and replace it. So here you see a lens being deliberately placed into the upper fornix. She is then instructed on how to move the lens around through the lid into the lower fornix and then push back into place using the lower lid as before. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you found these few tips useful. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free to contact us. And if you have any ideas for any future videos, then please also get in touch. Mm -hmm.